Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to start this website interaction. We're going to design and prototype this over the next two videos here in Adobe XD. So today we're going to create the design for this awesome website. And in the second video, we're going to prototype this awesome interaction. So let's go ahead and get started with the design for this website. Like always, if you guys are a member of the channel, the completed project file for this project is available on the community tab, so you can go over there and download that if you're interested. So first, I have a normal 1920 by 1080 web-sized artboard, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the layout grid. I always like to turn down my grid, so I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity on that blue cyan fill to about 6%. Then I'm going to leave the rest of the columns and the spacing alone and we're ready to get started with our design. Before we go ahead and move any further, today's video is sponsored by Milano. Milano is a bit different than traditional software. It's more like working on a wall in a creative studio. It allows you to map out your projects, gather and organize all of your inspiration in one convenient place, and it also allows you to collaborate with your colleagues or clients in real time. As a full stack designer, it's an essential part of my workflow, and this awesome tool is free, so check out the link at the top of the description. Since we're creating an entire interaction, the design's very simple for this, so let's go ahead and lay out the navigation up top. Today we're going to be using SF Pro Display from Apple's UI Kit. You can grab that by going up to File, Get UI Kit, and then Apple iOS and then you can install that font. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type in work. This is going to be my first link and I'm gonna line that on the farthest left hand column. Let's go ahead and change that to our font and we'll lower it down to a body size font with 16 points and we'll bump this to a medium weight and align it to the left and then let's go ahead and just uppercase that. Holding Alt or Option, I'm gonna drag out a duplicate and we'll put about 50 spacing in between these two, and then I'll create a contact us button. Both of these are gonna be about 45 from the top of the artboard. On the far right, we're gonna have a very simple menu button for more options, and this is going to be just a text that says menu. We're gonna align that to the right and put it on that far right hand column. In the center, we're gonna have the company logo, for this company, I'm just going to create a circle. So I'm just going to go grab the ellipse tool, holding shift to drag out a circle. I think I'll set mine to 60 by 60. And I'm going to add a border to this of three for now. I'm going to make sure that's on the inside, removing the fill and turning this to white. And we'll add a drop shadow to that. Then I'm going to center that to the artboard and then grab all of our menu and center them together. With that, we'll just make sure this is about 25 from the top of the artboard. Command G to group that together, and we'll call that group nav. We're gonna be doing this website in a dark theme, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the fill color to the artboard to 110E0E. Just a nice black color, and then we'll also update our links to a white color. And I'm actually gonna bump up the border radius on the circle to four, just to make it a little thicker there. And our navigation is done. For our heading here in the center, we're gonna be using a very large font. So I'm just gonna grab the type tool with T on the keyboard and just type out some heading text, moving the industry forward. And we'll just blow that up to about 110 points in size. We'll center align that. I'm gonna make this two lines of text, uppercase that, and we're gonna go with a heavy weight. Then I'm gonna center that to the artboard horizontally and for the vertical spacing, we'll go with about 300 points from the very top of the artboard. I'm holding option or alt with that element selected to get the pink numbers here, showing the relationship from all the elements on the artboard. We are gonna add a gradient to this text, but before we do that, let's go ahead and add in our rectangle. That's gonna be for our image here at the bottom for our next section when we scroll. So I'm gonna hold Shift and Alt until I get it to these columns here on the left and the right. So we have 140 spacing on each side. And then I'm just gonna drag this down around 50 or 60 below this H1. 
We're going to use the 3D transform on this. So I'm just going to click on the cube here in the properties inspector. And we can rotate this about 30 to 35 degrees. I'm going to set mine to 35. And I want to make sure this is about 240 below that. So I'm just going to adjust the vertical positioning. So we have our basic layout looking something like that. So now that we have this basic wireframe done, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the layout so we remove those columns. And I'm going to grab my heading text, go up to Object, Path, Convert to Path, or you can use Command 8 to convert that to a path. So now this is no longer editable text, it's just actual vectors. So if I double click here, I can adjust all of the points on this text. So I'm just going to create a rectangle that is the bounding box of that text. So it's the same height and width. And so now with this rectangle, we're actually going to set the color of the text. So here in the fill on this rectangle, I've unchecked the border and I'm going to go into the fill color and choose linear gradient. So I'm going to select this gray color right here and I'm actually going to grab this fill color. This is a pinkish peach color and I'm going to paste it in. The color code is FFC6B7. And then I'm going to adjust the anchor points here on this slider to make sure I get the exact color I'm going for. Kind of going at an angle like this, something like that. We can always adjust this later. So I'm going to select this rectangle now and I'm going to send it all the way to the back with command shift, left square bracket key, or you can do that in the layers panel by just dragging it below. Now I have my text on top because we're going to be masking with that text. So I'm going to select both of those, the text and the rectangle, and hit Command Shift M, or you can go up to Object, Mask with Shape. And so now I get to see how my gradient looks on my text. So I'm actually going to double click, select my rectangle, and then I can edit the gradient and get it exactly the way I want it on this text. So for now, we'll just go with something like that. Finally, for this screen, I'm going to add an image from Unsplash. So I've just grabbed this nice textured image. I think it looks pretty cool for like a background of our next section. And you'll notice that the color of our text, that peachish color, has actually been sampled from this image and modified just a little bit to bring out more of the peach color. Uh, but it's pretty much very close to the tint that's in this image, so it matches nicely. So with that, I'm actually going to double click on our artboard name and we'll just call this home-start. Then I'm gonna hit Command D to duplicate that artboard. So now we're gonna go ahead and start working on the end state for our interaction. So first, let's go ahead and flip this card back. So I'm just gonna go and set the rotation to zero. And instead of centering this in the artboard, I do want the logo here to overlap a little bit. So I'm gonna send this all the way to the back with Command Shift, left square bracket key. And then I'm gonna send that text even further back. And I want about 85 points from the bottom of the artboard. So that's just going to give us a slight overlay of that logo. And it's going to set our menu right above, which I think looks pretty cool. So this is why we added that nice drop shadow. So we get that hover effect there. I also have a border on this. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have that removed on both artboards. So next we need to create our menu. So I'm just going to grab the type tool with T on the keyboard, type in some junk text. And for this, we're going to scale this to 80 size font. And for now, I'm just going to put in digital design. For this one, we're going to set the weight to medium. We're going to align it to the left and, of course, go with the uppercase. And let's also turn on our layout grid. And we'll drag this to the second column here. And I'll just put it somewhere up at the top. We're going to have a total of five links. So I'm just going to hold Option or Alt and just drag out a few and then grab all of them and even out the space in between them. And let's see what space we got here. 44 in between each is what I want to go with. So I'm gonna make sure I have that. You can also use repeat grid on this. And I'm actually gonna center that with this kind of card, this rectangle instead of the artboard. So it's centered vertically there. And then I'll go ahead and change the text for each one of these links. Then I'm going to grab all of them and I'm going to fill them to white. Here in the bottom right, I want a paragraph of text. So I'm going to grab the type tool and just drag that out. 
I'm going to do this three columns wide and we'll set this to 16 size font, medium weight, and I'm going to set the line height to 24. I'm just going to paste in some text and also set that to uppercase. And I'm just going to visually align this. Might even align it to the bottom of the last link. So we have something like that. Then I'm also going to change this artboard to home dash end. And with that, we've pretty much got our basic setup for our starting point and our ending point of our interaction. So that's going to do it for part one. We've created our design and now we're ready to start prototyping. Hope to see you guys in the next video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Special thanks to Milnote for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to check out their product for planning your next creative project, check out the link at the top of the description. That's going to do it for me today. Make sure you guys subscribe for more design and Adobe XD related content. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.